Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. It is my pleasure to serve this congregation. My name is Reverend Jennifer Innes. It is a joy to be with you in this moment, in this intentional community that strives to live into its mission of embracing freedom, loving wholeheartedly, growing in mind, body, and spirit, and adding to the healing of the world. We are unapologetically progressive in welcoming all people of all ethnicities and races, social economic situations, class, sexual orientation, gender identities, politics, and abilities. We advocate for human rights, and we commit to being good stewards of this earth. And in so living our mission, we recognize the network of relationships of which we are a part. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They were here along with other nations long before the first European settlers came down the river. We honor the Peoria people when we gather in worship. We honor them for who they were and for who they are today. I want to thank everybody for joining us in person and online for our in-gathering, our official start of the church year. Uh, one of the lessons that we have learned is how precious it is to come together, to be with other people, to expand our circles of care and kindness. So if you are new, welcome. Please help us get to know you. We have plenty of name tags if you're joining us online. Please say hello with the folks who are also online. And if after the service, everybody is welcome to join us for coffee in Fellowship Hall, for visiting and for getting to know each other both in person as well as online. I want to invite folks at this point as we're entering into worship, we have the technical thing of entering into worship mode with our devices. So if you please turn them to worship mode, which is vibrate or silent, whichever you prefer. And... So let me offer that today, as I said, we are in the start of our new congregational year. This is our in-gathering water communion. Uh, we begin our congregational year with a ritual that recognizes how summer is a time of fluidity in experience and schedules. And so we come together in this moment with a bit of water that represents our summer journeys wherever they might have taken us, however near or far. And we come together knowing that we are far greater together than when we are by ourselves. There is so much more that we can do and accomplish so many places you can go. And so I want to ask you, uh, as you were coming into the service today, you were given, uh, hopefully given little paper water drops, fairly big water drops, if you will, and on those, if you would write something that expresses what you have been seeking, so what has made you thirsty, if you will, but also you, if you would write something that has filled you up, something that has replenished you, and maybe even something you'd like to see be replenishing as the, in the year to come. So you have a couple of different options to choose from whatever kind of moves you, comes into this moment. We'll be gathering those together uh, towards the end of our service during our actual water communion. All right. And also, we have, as part of our opening for the year, we have a potluck. I uh, want to invite everybody to stay for that. And we have some, it's warm enough out, we're going to be able to kind of do the water kind of games, the splash games that we had in mind. So we have reusable water balloons. Come and see what those actually look like. That's, a, that's an interesting thing. And we have some other elements that, are, that everybody can participate in after the service as well. And I want to say it would be great if we had a few additional hands to help make all the potluck happen, the prepping and the cleaning as well. Thank you. And let's see. Next week, I want to offer this official start of our religious education program. Let's see. Uh, our excellent religious educator, Jesse Lachlan, for more information about that. Thank you for joining us today if you're bringing your family of all ages. And I want to offer a comment. Uh, you'll see a note, a change in the order of service today. Uh, based on various conversations, and in order to give the children more time in class for the coming year, we won't have a separate time to greet your neighbor during the service at this point. 
But I do want to say that we can always say hello, right? So please take a moment as we're going forward and beginning the service and right after the service to make sure to say hello to the folks around you. We want to make sure that everybody feels welcome. And I have one final thing so I want to offer on behalf of our covenant groups. I don't usually get to be the person to talk about our covenant groups, but I want to take a moment right now. So we have a small group ministry, which is groups of, you know, four, five, six, ten, maybe a little bit more folks come together and discuss uh, their thoughts and responses to various topics. Might be topic of the day, but it might be something spiritual, something enriching. And those groups gather about twice a month throughout the church year. And this is our time of year for refreshing those, uh, for people to be able to sign up in particular. And we can, if we need new different times or configurations, we do that. And new participants are always invited and welcome as our new group leaders. And I encourage folks to participate in these. This is one of those kind of unsung ministries that is so vital to the health of a religious community because there are few other places in our lives that provide a place to really think out loud and get to know people in this kind of way, on an ongoing basis in this kind of way. People make enduring connections in these groups. And so when so much of our global heartbreak is due to broken relationships, this is a way to mend ourselves. And it's such a fabulous power, and it's such a quiet thing that happens. And I'll offer, as I was introduced to them way back uh, in the 1990s as a student minister, I was in part introduced to them by the tagline, saving the world 10 people at a time. And I'm a firm believer in that. I think the power of connection is a great superpower. So let's enhance it together. This is the time for signing up. I want to invite folks to see Joyce Rosenberger for information. All right, so there's the advertising for the morning. Now I want to invite us to enter into worship by joining me by rising in body or spirit for our opening hymn, number 38, Morning Has Broken. Please rise. Please be seated. Good morning. These are opening words. This is a call by Reverend Gretchen Haley. This is a call for all the people longing for liberation all who wandered too often. The desert, not sure of the way forward. Too often thirsty and afraid, looking for water. Here is a call to collect ourselves 
and the hopes we have tucked away, set aside too often for another day. Here, we are building a welcome table that never finds its end, a river that cannot run dry. The waters are always rapid and then still steady, and then waterfalls. My water share is from Yosemite this year. There is nothing tidy or perfect possible in this journey. Abundant life is messy and glorious and filled with risk. This is a call for the diving in with all the dreams of your heart, the struggles, okay, the silliness. The fear, the hunger, the courage, the community, the love. Here we remember the time for joy is always now. Come, let us worship together. We invite Anthony Boudreau off, up to offer our chalice lighting this morning. Our chalice lighting was created for Reverend Jennifer's installation in 2021. Peoria UU member Cynthia Thompson drew from our mission and covenant when she created it. A New Faith Rising by Cynthia Thompson. Our chalice curves, catches the spark and bursts into a flame beckoning across space and through darkness to light a way for each seeker on a journey unfolding into pain and into beauty, reach forward and clasp open hands, form a circle, celebrate our infinite forms and spirit, join our beloved community, kindle the courage needed to create real change. Come, help heal our world.
Part of the beginning of the church year is the return of the choir. Thank you. The work of the church is one of welcome. We prepare to meet our friends and our neighbors, our fellow travelers in every moment and at any stage of life. It is an act of care and generosity to be present with one another in all the ways we can. And with part of that deliberateness of care is that we also take a collection during worship. We recognize the value in the act of giving that helps us get ready to meet and encounter one another, to greet and to serve. But also as part of our service uh, with and to one another is that we give a little bit back into the world as well. We practice sharing our plate where one third of the undesignated offering uh, goes out into an agency in our local community. And so for September, we are doing Look, It's My Book. This is particularly wonderful, good match for the Unitarian Universalists because we love the word and we love the books. Because we know, we know that, that the encounter with the world comes from all the ways that we can, especially reading and wondering and learning and everything that goes with it. Look, it's my book has been working since about, I think, 2009, and they provide seven books per year to Peoria and Peoria Heights area schools in particular. And it's no small part in relationship to the high poverty rates in each of those communities, our community. And it's provided through for um, children from kindergarten through fourth grades. So one of the most critical reading times in our lives. And so this is part of what we are offering as in support of for our Share the Plate this month. So one third goes to Look, It's My Book. Uh, one, two thirds go to the church. That's the undesignated funds. So I want to invite you to be generous in giving. If your offering is toward a pledge, please indicate that in the memo of a check or in the offering envelope. Uh, and also if you are uh, computer savvy or tech savvy, you can load go make a donation uh, through the QR code in the order of service. Uh, the ushers will pass the plates during our music for meditation. Then after the plates have passed, you are welcome to come light candles of care with us during the music. And I also want to uh, invite you, this is a good moment if you want to keep writing something, a note on the uh, raindrops as well for 
today's service. So now our morning offering will be greatly received. Will the ushers please come forward?
come into this room, way into this seat, breathe into this body, the very body that will be you for better and for worse, in sickness and in health, to death do us part. Come into this day, raise your gaze into this light, this one steadfast sun who watches over all growing beings, even you, even now. Come into this heart and break into the boundlessness of wild beauty, no beginning or ending in you, but flowing through like white water, reaching toward all that ever was and all that ever shall be. This is the time of sharing the joys and sorrows among us, we begin with a joy about music. We want to offer a, a thank you and a joy again to Kathy McNeil, uh, who is a new member of this congregation. She offered the music this summer so freely given and with her own joy. So thank you again, Kathy. want to offer a note of thanks to everyone who was in our group for the Pekin Marigold Parade yesterday. We showed up well. The new banner had its debut, and we ran out of everything to hand out. It was great. And I could tell in a few moments especially that our presence with its welcoming message was noted and welcomed by folks in that community. They got a couple of standing applauses in that sense. I want to also offer in our community um, solidarity with families in the Morton School District as they're speaking up against uh, bias, racial bias, as also um, against lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, asexual, plus community as well. I want to offer a note uh, for care and recovery to Georgia Evans. She had some minor surgery and she is recovering well. Let us extend wishes for care and health to Georgia. And in our much larger global community, I offer a note of sorrow and solidarity and encouragement to Morocco for they suffered uh, a major quake and that's left at least 2,000 people dead. And it was quite heartbreaking to see some of those images in the course of things and how much there's still so much to be done in reaching the most remote areas that were affected. I know it might not seem like much to offer prayers of care so far away, but there is something to be said for saying, we see you and we see your pain and your struggle and for that to be known as widely as possible. I want to offer one more moment of shared quiet for all the names, the milestones, the sorrows, the joys, all that lives with us and might be unspoken. There's far more in among us than we can possibly know, but we have a circle that is wide enough to hold it all. So please join me in one more moment of quiet to pay attention to our breath and pause. Amen, shalom, and blessed be. And now we receive the story. It's so good to see everybody in our little groups and our big groups all coming together. Today the story is Higgins, A Drop with a Dream by the Reverend Chris Buse. Once upon a time, there was a drop named Higgins. Higgins was no ordinary drop. 
He was a drop with a dream. Higgins lived in a valley where it had not rained in a very long time. All the lovely green grass was turning brown. All the beautiful flowers were wilting. And the trees were starting to droop. Higgins had a dream that one day the valley would be thriving again, full of life. But what could he do? He was just one drop of water. One day, Higgins decided he would tell the other drops about this dream of his. And they all listened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, good, good idea, Higgins. But no one really believed his dream would come true. Higgins, said one drop, get your head out of the clouds. Higgins decided he had to do something to make his dream come true. So he began to think. One day, he happened upon an old bucket. Hmm. If enough of us drops got together in this bucket, maybe we could fill it up. And if we filled up this bucket, we might be able to help some of the flowers bloom again. So eagerly, Higgins ran to go tell his friends, hey, 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 we can all jump in this bucket together. His friends didn't believe him. And he said, that's OK. I'm going to do it anyway. And he dropped himself in the bucket. For a long time, Higgins was very lonely in his bucket. But after a while, some of the other drops looked around, and they noticed that things were getting worse. More flowers were wilting. More trees were drooping. Suddenly, one drop shouted, hey, hey, I'm going to get in the box with Higgins, too. And then another, and then another. And then hundreds of drops came. And together, they all filled the bucket. Well, more drops saw what they were doing. And they got another bucket. And they filled that bucket. And before long, there were two buckets, and then four, and then 10, and then hundreds, and then thousands of buckets full of water. When a stiff breeze came and blew those buckets down, all of those gathered drops of water flowed together and they made a mighty stream. And everywhere they flowed, the grass turned green. The flowers started to bloom again, and the trees stood up a little straighter. All of this happened because Higgins did not give up on his dream, even though he was just one drop in the bucket. He knew a dr enough drops make a bucket full. And when there's enough buckets, and when the wind gathers behind them, then their waters of justice will flow like a mighty river. I wonder what buckets you'll fill. I wonder what we can all do together. I can't wait to find out. Eyes.
Will you please join me in our hymn, number 1064, Blue Boat Home, by Unitarian Universalist musician Peter Mayer, singing to what it means to be together. We humans are a thirsty bunch. We gather, we desire, we hope, we crave. We cannot go more than a mere few days without water, without being refilled, without this kind of hydration in our lives. I know I know that this body certainly is a thirsty bunch because of the, because of just by the nature of some of the questions that you offered in the question box sermon last week, uh, including how do we deal with getting older? How do we gather together? What kind of language do we use in our spiritual lives? all of these kinds of questions, wondering how do we become more welcoming, more, uh, more promoting, more in terms of justice, both in our larger world as well as amongst ourselves. How do we, how do we? And humans, we have been like this, well, for a long time, like always. I was drawing from the second book of Isaiah, Isaiah for today a little, which begins, 
O come, you longing, thirsty souls. Drink freely from the spring. Come, you weary, famished folk, and end your hungering. Why spend yourself on empty air? Why not be satisfied? For everywhere a feast is spread that's always at our side. O come, you longing, thirsty souls. And this is this longing that is spiritual and physical. We are water seekers. We go to great lengths to fill up our lives. We are, as you might imagine, not unlike Higgins, that drop that began as the mere drop in the bucket that wanted something new, wanted, wanted a more fresh and green and abundant earth. And all of this desire certainly speaks to the beginning when we first started to celebrate our water communion, something that is celebrated in congregations, Unitarian Universalist congregations all across the country, many doing so today, right now. The, let me tell you about the origin of this for a little bit, because the origin itself is about finding strength, wanting to gather, wanting to be filled. Over 40 years ago, in 1980, Unitarian Universalist women came together at the Women in Religion Conference in Michigan. They wanted to have a voice when women were so long kept from being accepted as leaders, even in Unitarian Universalism. They sought to create a ritual where all could contribute, and the participants were invited and indeed did bring water from every corner of the country as a symbol of the life within each of us, no matter the gender, age, color, orientation, ability, and so on. And women left that conference and brought a bit of that water and that ritual back to the congregations. And not only did they return with this water, they returned with a deeper charge to all of us to include women and female perspectives in our understanding of scripture and who can lead in, a, in the church. And so it's efforts such as theirs that led to changes so that women are predominantly the religious leaders in our communities, that we have more leaders who are trans and non-binary, we have more who are black, indigenous, and people of color, more who are, have varying abilities, who are neurodivergent, we are more able to include the range of how we think and act and dream in all the ways that shows up in our human longing and how our history impacts us and how we live in those ripples as well. That is also part of our seeking. How can we do better knowing how much has been difficult and still remains difficult among us? We still strive and live into, I think, that invitation. Oh, come, you longing, thirsty souls. Perhaps this year we can move one measure further into the deeper truths of how we regard ourselves and each other as human beings. Perhaps this year we move one increment further into public witness and advocacy. We're off to a pretty good start this week. We want to be there and present to, to replenish the aridity around, that is around us for human rights and democracy and for our earth. And so this congregation keeps coming back to this conversation. The, the key words for this year from, uh, in conversation with the board is vision, visibility, and vitality. Vision, visibility, vitality. We want to more fully embody our mission of embracing freedom, loving inclusively, growing in mind, body, or spirit, and adding to the healing of the world. We want to be known for service and as advocates for justice. We want to be known as a center of compassion for all people. And we want a vibrant congregational life for all ages. That sounds pretty good, right? I like that. Let's do that. And so we do this 
in our striving, we want this together and we bring it into being. And we do this a little bit with a ritual such as this, gathering in all that is among us, all that is among us, like the many streams that flow together. Because we know that together we are far more powerful than when we are alone. And we use this in this moment with the symbol of the gathering of the waters. We bring a little bit with us and add it to so much more, knowing that whatever we are bringing, whether it's actual, whether you've brought something, or whether it's symbolic, that it is part and parcel of all the elements of the earth. It is part of what has already moved through the systems that are around us through all time. It is part of the perpetual cycle of life in all its phases and stages. And so all earth, all water is really one water. We can take that as a bit of replenishing message. All water is really one water continuously flowing through this great sphere. So even if that water is from the garden or the rain barrel or the kitchen tap or, well, maybe the church kitchen, who knows? It's all been around and around as part of the journey. And that by itself is refreshing. So I want to offer this moment to come together. Uh, Sherry will play uh, some music while we gather. It is time, if you've brought some water to add to our common bowl, this is the moment uh, while the music is playing. And I also want to invite you to bring, if you've written something on those water drops, please come. We'll collect those and share some of those um, as we gather or after the music is done. And I will start. I'll just begin with the water. We've got to start, right? So we simply begin with the water that comes from all of the communions that have come in the past, all that has been gathered, the congregation's life as it's been flowing since 1843. We begin there.
We have an abundance of messages on the drops, and we will put them onto our lovely waterfall that has a bit of a bucket, if you didn't notice. And I invite folks to come and kind of see what other messages are in the course of things after the service. We've had so many messages. We have things that fill us include love and that Bowie loves this church, and that there's a whole lot of love going on here. Filled up, being filled up by hugs, but something that's maybe thirsty is seeking music. Something that also is a thirsty thing is seeking community and being filled up by family. We've had some water from different places, celebrating water from Lake Michigan and the local pool, and so much more. And full, what fills us is to feel like we belong here, to feel like we belong. Thirsty is to be seeking more spiritual knowledge, and feeling full is a sense of belonging. And some of you wrote small dissertations on your drops, too. I highly recommend reading all. It is abundant and an abundance of messages. So I want to offer in this moment a blessing of the waters, a blessing of all that has been received in this moment. 
May the waters gathered here remind us of what each of us brings to this community, of the waters that nourished us before we were even born, that continue to give us sustenance and energy for our life journeys and for all the creatures of this earth. May we gratefully continue to swim to the other side. And now would you please join me in our closing hymn, Rise in Body or Spirit, for hymn 100, I've Got Peace Like a River. By Vanessa Williams. Like the flame of the chalice, may the flame in our hearts burn, remaining unextinguished. May it ignite our energies, our drive, our resolve to dream, to build, and to live into the world. That good which exists for now only in our imaginings. Find each other and build to become a track a rivulet, a stream, a river, a sea. So we are drawn together, so we are fortunate to find each other, so we are bound together in the sacred passage toward an unknown ocean and entity. And having renewed that coming together, having refreshed our connection with each other and with the stream of life, let us go forth, bringing the message of life and hope and love into our thirsty world. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin.